everyone. Today is a super exciting day. We are at the first and only wine bar in Inglewood, 1010 Wine. And to top it off, it is a black female owned business and I love putting a spotlight on businesses owned by women of color. And you guys know, I absolutely love wine. This episode is going to be a fun one. Let's go. If you guys have been watching this show, you know that I absolutely love wine. I'm actually obsessed with wine. I call it my mama juice or mommy <laughs> juice. So it's only fitting that I am at this wine bar, 1010. Yes. And this is Leslie right next to me. Hi. What inspired you to open up a wine bar? So my sister and I are born and raised in Inglewood, which is where okay. we are right now. Um, and we love wine. We developed yeah. our friendship in adulthood over wine. Well, we could totally be friends. <laughs> yes. I, I don't call it mom juice. So I'm okay, a okay. So I just drink to drink. Okay. I don't have an excuse. That's all right. That is all right. <laughs> We just love to drink wine with our friends, okay. and we were tired of going outside of our community to do that. Mm. So we were like, even if it was just our family and friends that showed up every night, we knew Aww. that we would have some people here, I and we know that. that we wanted uh, this space in this community, and so yeah. that's kind of where it came from. I think that's fabulous, and I also love that the wine that you have here is very diverse wine. You even have some bottles owned by some Latinos, which I think is just like, so cool. Yeah, one of the ones we try, are gonna try today okay. is from a, a Mexican-American winemaker. So cool. 95% um, of the wines that we carry are from black-owned wine companies. Yes. We're very intentional about the wines that we put on our menu. Lots of women-owned wine companies, <laughs> uh, minority-owned, and then black-owned, of course. So it's fabulous. Thank you. I love that you're putting a spotlight on that, you know? Yeah. And just bringing awareness to that. So I'm so happy and excited to try. I'm excited for you to try them with the dishes that we have yes, prepared. Yes, we're going to be pairing it with some... Yeah, so we'll kind of talk through, you know, what you're eating, what okay. you're drinking, and why we decided to pair them together. So okay. Good. Now, I don't know anything about wine. I just love to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so please, educate me, teach me. I know a lot about food. Okay. But wine... Not so much. Well, that's the best part because I think wine by itself is great, food by itself is great, mm. but the two together, they really enhance each other. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> what are we starting with first here? We figured we'd do brunch with Prosecco. Okay. So I'm going to bring our chef Jeff in so he can. What over. is that? <laughs> our oh. first pairing of the day. That's the first pairing this of is the, the day. This is our first one. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Chef Jeff. It's nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Oh my wow. goodness. What is this lovely masterpiece? <laughs> So this is our is peach cobbler French toast. I was just about to say, this is like French toast. It is peach cobbler on the, with brioche bread. Okay. With a hint of whiskey in it. <laughs> As if we don't have enough alcohol. <laughs> oh my gosh. The reason why we chose Prosecco is because it's brunch and everybody likes a little bubbles with brunch. The great thing about this Prosecco too is on the nose, you're gonna get uh, pear, apple, and peach. Mm. And so kind of like we were talking about earlier, wine really enhances the flavor of food. Mm -hmm. So once you have a sip of this and then take a bite of the peach cobbler French toast, it's really gonna enhance those flavors. And there's a little bit of acidity in there, so that'll go great with the whiskey peaches. So enjoy. Wait a minute, why am I the only one with <laughs> <laughs> plate is nice and warm, y'all. <laughs> My goodness. Let's, so let's do a cheers. cheers. Congratulations Thank you. on Thanks everything. This is awesome. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. Let's do this. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this Ooh. is definitely one of our most popular mm. brunch pairings. Um, and people also love this wine because it's Mary J. Blige's wine. Oh! Yeah. Uh, yes, so it's called wow. Sun Goddess. It's Prosecco, so that means it comes from Italy. It's gonna go really great with the, the French toast. It really, really does. This French, the, the French toast mm -hmm. is, is so good, but the peaches, I could just totally eat this like by itself. I can give you something to go. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like one of your popular wines? It's one of our most wine popular bar. wines, and it's actually one of our favorites as well because Mary J, 
there's a lot of celebrity liquor brands mm -hmm. and wine brands out, but she's very intentional and hands-on with her brand. And I also love that she works with her sister to produce this brand. Oh. I own this space with my sister, so that, you know, is very near and dear to my heart. So her and her sister go over every harvest. They're a part of the winemaking process. So I love that about this brand because they are very intentional about what they're putting in the bottle and not just slapping Mary J's name on it. Of so. course. One for one. <laughs> one for one. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Next. So this winemaker, his name is Chris, okay. and he has been making wine in Lodi, California for years. He's Mexican-American, first generation. Nice. And he decided that he wanted to branch off and start making wines himself. He wanted wines that were more approachable, wines that paired well with the foods that black and brown people like to eat. And so hey, that's now. why. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's very intentional, yes, which yes. I love. Yes, so we love his wine. His Tempranillo, which is what we're about to have, okay. flies off the shelf. He also has an amazing white blend as well. And we decided to pair it with the charcuterie board mm -hmm. because this is a light to medium okay. red wine. So Love. it can go with a lot of things. Okay. And honestly, I know it's kind of taboo to chill red wine, but this wine would be really good chilled as well. I chill my red wine. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> I didn't know it was taboo, but I chill my this red wine. This one is okay to chill because okay. it's light to medium body. Got it. And then I love you did like a little like a pepperoni rose. Rose, that's so pretty. <laughs> and then what kind of cheese do we, we have, have here? We have manchego. Okay. A sharp cheddar. Okay. And a blueberry goat cheese. Ooh. I've never had <laughs> <laughs> I've never had blueberry goat yeah. cheese before. Blueberry goat cheese. And then why do you think that this wine would pair beautifully with the charcuterie board with with the cheese and the fruit. Yeah, so because it's a lighter red wine, it's gonna go with a lot of things that's on this plate. We specifically chose this wine and with this cheese because that blueberry goat cheese also has notes of vanilla. So if you take a sip of the wine and then go ahead and have a bite of the cheese, it's gonna complement it really well. So first you wanna swirl because you wanna swirl. open up the wine. Yes. So now we're getting all the oxygen in. Okay. And then you're gonna smell it what you're smelling, your brain is gonna start thinking what you're about to taste. Okay, cool. So those vanilla notes that you're smelling, your brain is like, oh, okay, we're about to try that. Okay. So then take a sip. You don't wanna take too much when you're initially. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you like doubt it, but. <laughs> When you're first tasting it, you don't want to take too much because okay. you really want the flavors to coat in your mouth. I definitely yeah. have been doing this wrong. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Got it. And then try the blueberry goat. Is that what you were saying? Mm hmm Okay. Because it's going to have those vanilla notes. Wow. And I have to tell you, having this wine here with that blueberry goat, is definitely an experience. I always like to say it's like a party in my mouth, yes. and that's exactly <laughs> what it feels like. It's just so, it's so satisfying. Yes, yes. So why is it important to you for 1010 Wine to be here in Inglewood? My sister and I were born and raised in Inglewood, California, so it was really important for us to open up this space in this city. And we love the wines and the winemakers that we work with. Uh, we are, like I said earlier, very intentional about um, the wines that we put on our menu. And a lot of them you're not gonna find in other places. And our goal is that that's not the case a year or two down the line. We want guests to come in, try the wines, and then go to their local grocery store or go to other restaurants in the area and ask for these wines. So people always asked me what I love about this space and besides the fact that I get to drink wine every day <laughs> it's that <laughs> Definitely that's a dream job yes <laughs> but as our business grows the businesses of the wine makers that we feature here, their businesses also grow. Yeah. And so I think that that's really cool. And we've had people tell us like, hey, you know what? Now we're being carried in this spot in Los Angeles, or now we just got this distribution deal. And so that's really cool for us. Y'all, let me just tell you, today is a good day because I get to eat <laughs> and drink wine. <laughs> so what do we have in front of me, chef? So this is our shrimp risotto okay. with sauteed shrimp bell peppers, and then we finish it off with Cajun butter. Cajun butter. I always say, butter makes just everything better. <laughs> it does, it does, it does. It really does. <laughs> okay, 
and let's talk about this beautiful bottle of wine. Yes, so we are having a glass of House of Brown Rosé. This is their 2022 vintage. And this is produced by Brown Estate, which is the first black owned vineyard in Napa Valley. Wow! And yes, so they have a really interesting story. It's a family business. They brought the property in the 80s and they were selling their grapes to other winemakers in Napa. And all of the winemakers were getting these rave reviews about their wine. So in the 90s, they decided to release their own wine wow. and they just have been killing it ever since. So they're known for their Zinfandel. This rosé is actually 75% Zinfandel. Okay. And it's literally the first winery that I ever went to. So it has a special wow. place in my heart. Yeah, it's going to pair really well with the shrimp and risotto. Actually, on their tasting notes on their website, this dish is a play on shrimp and grits. And on their website, it says that shrimp and grits is the perfect pairing. The acidity from the rosé is going to go really well with the spiciness mm. of the Cajun butter and the Cajun shrimp. Ooh. Okay, yeah, let's so go for it. Raspberry and watermelon on the nose. Light, refreshing. Wow. On the finish. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Mm. And you know what? I don't drink too much like rose, mm -hmm. but this is great. I love the way it's not like too sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like just right. And like you said, it's like, it's very refreshing. Yeah. Um, and you said it would pair well because of the spices coming from the exactly. shrimp. Exactly, because it has that risotto. acidity. Because it's not very sweet, it's going to pair really well and yes. kind of tone down the spice a little bit that you're going to get from the Cajun butter and the Cajun oh. shrimp. Wait a minute, I just saw a cheese pool. Yeah, it's porn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, parm in the risotto. <laughs> okay, let's try this. I'm gonna take a little swig. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Wow. Well, I guess this. Oh, <laughs> I can taste this cheese, this parm, and then the shrimp is cooked to perfection. And just the, the spices. What else is in here? I know oh. that. Ah, <laughs> that is the best answer. Wow. This we do is make so the Cajun good. butter in house, so I think that that Everything definitely made. makes a difference. Um, Everything is made to order. Um. <laughs> this is so comforting. It just makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. <laughs> and then you have the refreshing rosé to go with it. Thank I guess you. my question is, for people like myself, <laughs> who don't know too much about wine pairing and food, like what is something that I should stay away from when it comes to like food and, and wine pairing? Maybe flaming hot Cheetos <laughs> and some red wine. Is that like a bad pairing? That's a whole yeah. Thing. Okay. Yeah. There's definitely pairings that don't go great together. But the thing about wine is one that there's over a thousand varietals of wine. So there's wow. definitely something that pairs with everything, okay. right? The other thing I say too is that the reason why sometimes wine feels a little intimidating is because it might feel a little stuffy. You feel mm. like you have to know the verbiage. You feel like you have to know, you know, the regions and all of that stuff. But wine is really a personal experience. So, you know, this is a suggested pairing, mm. but if you don't love shrimp or if you don't love things that have a little bit of kick, this can go with ton of other things. It could go with the lobster roll. It could go mm. with, you know, even the charcuterie board that we had earlier. So I always say that wine brings people together, but it's definitely your own individual experience. Mm. So I tell people, don't feel like you have to follow the rules. Like, oh, you know, it, there's really no rules in wine, in my opinion. You can really just choose what you like to eat and drink together. And if that works for you, then do it. That's awesome. Who cares what the tasting notes yeah, say? Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. 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 <laughs> the stereotype of wine could kind of 
feel like stuffy to certain people. Why do you think that is? I think it's because it's just an age old tradition. I feel okay. like, you know, a lot of wineries or vineyards have been passed on for generation to generation to generation. Okay. So if you didn't necessarily grow up in wine culture, it might feel a little bit intimidating to jump in. I think that sometimes people just feel like it's intimidating because it's something that, you know, has been passed down from generation, generation to generation. generation. Exactly. Do you think also maybe because it could seem not as accessible? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And that's what I really love about our space because we're right in the middle of a community that is mostly black and brown. Mm -hmm. So we're making wine more accessible mm -hmm. to those people. And I think that people come here they feel comfortable asking questions about wine. They feel comfortable, you know, doing tastings and learning pronunciations of wine that they may not feel comfortable doing other places. Mm -hmm. Why did you start cooking? Like, why are you passionate about cooking? Um, cooking, I kind of fell in my lap. I was in high school. Okay. And I didn't want to do anything before getting out of school. So I took a cooking class. Oh, So okay. my sixth period was cooking. And the year I got it, I got a teacher that made me cook. Okay. And I fell in love with it. <laughs> I've been awesome. doing it ever since. Wow. Yeah. What's like your favorite thing to make? Barbecue. Barbecue. Barbecue is my favorite. Really? Yeah. Barbecue chicken, barbecue ribs, yeah, barbecue brisket, <laughs> barbecue shrimp. Barbecue everything. Am I missing something? <laughs> <laughs> got links. Okay. You got yes. everything. Yes. Wow. Fish. Got, cool. Yeah. yeah. Chef I love is that. always bringing us some goodies in here. Yeah, yeah. no, totally, <laughs> for real. I love that you said that it, what you do is very intentional from even the wine pairings with the foods that, you know, black and brown people eat as a culture. Um, I've never had a pairing with wine that, you know, came with basically shrimp and risotto like shrimp and grits, yeah. mm -hmm. which I think is just amazing and spot on. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, totally. And it just makes the experience nostalgic. Less than 1% of wineries in America are owned by black people. So that's, a very, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very low percentage. number. Like, yes. you know, less than like 100 brands. So it really does feel like it's not something that we have access to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, spaces like ours and there's other spaces like this in California that are really trying to let people know that black people are making wine, mm -hmm. black people are drinking wine. Um, we can yeah. be a part of that conversation exactly. and that community. I really think it's, it's really cool what you guys are doing here because it's inspiring and it's very purposeful at the same time. And I think that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chef thank Jeff. You. That kind of like uh, rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, Jeff. And Leslie, just for opening up your wine bar, um, like I said, I think it's just fantastic what you guys are doing. Thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you check out all of the wonderful wines that um, they have at this amazing bar. And we will see you next time. Bye.